So, moving along to item number 12, Agassiz Peak renaming process. Receive input from the council on the name change proposal for Agassiz Peak currently being considered by the Arizona Board on Geographic and Historical Names. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Good evening, Sarah Langley. I am your Public Affairs Director. Um, I am actually going to kick it over to Commissioner, uh, sorry, Commissioner Darrell Marks. He has another obligation that he needs to get to, so we'd like for him to have a, a chance to speak before he has to leave. Thank you. Good evening. Greetings. So I'm sure that from what I heard that you've already heard from the National Board on Geographic Names which is great. Um, a few years back, I think early 2020, before all the closures and everything happened, youth at Flagstaff High School came together to do a workshop on press releases and what does that look like. The topic they chose was looking at San Francisco Peaks and the names that it holds. Some of the things that they started to understand in their research was that some of the names that are up on the mountain right now are inappropriate and don't align with their cultural context and the things that they've learned growing up. An example that was given some of our Native American or Navajo students had said that growing up we were taught by our elders that this mountain is called Toko Osli. It wasn't until we came to either live or go to school here in Flagstaff that people we're calling it a different name, um, San Francisco Peaks. And in the process of identifying each of the individual peak names that are up there, they came across the name Agassiz. And in their research of Agassiz, they found that um, what he's known for prominently um, isn't quite appropriate to our communities of color and certainly not for those of the Native American students that were participating in this workshop. And so they began the process of identifying how do we as young people advocate for that name to be changed. They held a press conference. Vice Mayor uh, Whalen at the time came and was present along with some media and they shared their presentation with her. She then said, well, I, as city, we can't really make any changes with the mountain directly because of that being county forest land and it might go through, have to go through a federal process. But we can definitely work on changing some of the names here in Flagstaff, um, which led to a public process. They got to change the name of Agassiz Street to what it is now. And that gave the students an opportunity to not only reflect that something that they've all been meaning to ask, something that their parents and their grandparents were all wondering why um, this mountain would hold such a name. And that began the process of doing more research, going out to the communities and asking more questions. We were fortunate enough through some of the press releases that went out, some of the articles that were written, that the youth were put in contact with the actual Agassiz descendants. They were able to come to Flagstaff, meet with the youth, and all said that they didn't think it was appropriate that their family's name be on the mountain because of the history of Louis Agassiz. They're in the process of, in a, they're in a lawsuit process with Harvard University trying to remove his name from the university. And so they sent a letter of support. That's in uh, the information that Micaiah and Michelle will share with you. Uh, Makaias and Michelle have kind of been the spearhead um, youth in this effort. One of the things that I want to say in close without taking too much time from them is that they were just coming out of high school when they started this process. They're getting ready to graduate from university. I recognize that it's a slow moving process. I want them to feel that we're listening as the adults, the parents, that generation. Um, the paperwork was filed with the US Geographic bo um, Board and we're hopeful that city will support the youth as 
the board comes to Flagstaff and asks more questions about who feels that this should change. Now, during the press release, some of the youth recognized that the majority of them were Navajo. But they also knew that Navajo community doesn't necessarily have specific names for all of the peaks. And if they do, much of that is being lost to the generations. They do recognize their Hopi relatives have a name for that particular peak, which we call Agassiz from Flagstaff. Um, and that mountain is Omaki. And that's what was presented and submitted in the paperwork. And you'll hear from Michelle what that name mean, what that name means, and why um, that's of importance to not just Hopi people, Native American people, but all of Flagstaff. With that, I pass it on to Michelle, who I hope is ready to go online, and she'll share a little bit of the PowerPoint. And Macias is here to answer some questions for any and all. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, let me share my screen. Michelle, we're having a hard time hearing you. Okay, um, can you hear me? Oops. Yes, we can. Do you have a camera by chance? Terrific. Oh. Okay, there, I have a camera. Sorry, I just came straight from campus. Um... Let's see, I'm trying to figure out how to share. Mikhail, it's up on the top right side next to the leave button. Okay, can you see it? Okay, are you able to see it? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I think my it'll work better if I turn on my camera because my internet's kind of iffy. But I'd like to say hello. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, my name is Michelle So. I am currently a student at the University of Arizona, so that's why I'm not there in person. Um, I'm not. I just wanted to. Um, and announced that I'm not one of the original people that has started advocating for the restoring of the name. Um, um, over the past years, I've gone out of my way to go into the community and collect stories from um, Native elders, youth, and supporters. So I've been doing, I that's my part in all of this. Um, I'd also like to share some background information about Agassiz Peaks, and that's why and why we are advocating to rename Agassiz Peak. Um, so here, this is, okay, so this is a kind of a map of where ge geologically where Agassiz Peak is. And then above uh, on the bottom is like the names that all of the other indigenous tribes, what they call this. And then the history behind Agassiz Peaks, um, as you know, it was named after, um, after this um, figure who legitimized racist beliefs of white superiority and um, why we are trying to get the name changed. And so um, a little more background information is that at a lecture at, um, at a club in South Carolina, Agassiz had announced that African-Americans can situated a separate species, not meaning that they're human, and that um, the relations between blacks and whites were immoral and destructive to social equality. Um, so from what I had gone and done, I, off based off of the, from what I've saw on Coconino Forest Services website, Agassiz Peak was named, af, named in 1867 after the famous zoologist, um, Louise Agassiz, who made a fossil study and you can find this on their website. So this is where I had got it from. And then why this is an issue for indigenous communities um, because he legit legitimized racist beliefs of superiority. So keeping the name Agassiz Peak deeply affects indigenous 
communities because these indigenous communities as us associate the, the sacred mountain as with spiritual deities, ancestors, emergent ceremonies, climate, climate conduit and still integral to today's in daily practices. So that's the reason why I had tied in not only stories from my own family, but as well as going into other tribal communities such as Hopis and getting their 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 own personal connection as to what this what this mount what the mountain means to them and what they were taught. And these are the sacred names and of all the thirteen indigenous tribes that considered San Francisco Peaks as a sacred peak. And then these are just some of the quotes that I had gone from elders and this doesn't sum up all the stories that I've heard and it's kind of hard to translate Navajo into English because in Navajo it means a lot more and then also in Hopi where I would go into communities and they would tell me it was kind of hard for the, for the translator to get the meaning to me what when Hopi or their Navajo language it means so much more so it it was there's kind of that barrier but it you can tell from the stories that they share it means so much to them so this that was my part of trying to bring people stories and showing that how much this mountain means to them and then not also oh, then not also only from elderly but also from youth because they're the ones who are going to be continuing all these traditions and ceremonies and prayers. And I wanted to, we wanted to integrate that into why we are doing this, because we're not only doing this for them, we're doing it for our elders, our ancestors, and the people that come after us. And then this is some of the press release that Mr. Marks had talk, talked about. And so I just wanted to share that as well. And I also credit as the beginning, I said that I wasn't the one who started this. So we are just kind of continuing to grow from that and trying to get this to for, to go into changing the name. And then this is my closing statement. Um, Agassiz science was used to try to legitimize racist beliefs of white racial superiority, therefore naming a peak after him is not appropriate and antagonizes the beliefs and acknowledgments of indigenous nations and other communities of color. This creates a culture of racism and colonization that we deem as unacceptable. Um, so that's, this is the reason why we are trying to get this because to get the name changed because it doesn't align with who we are as, as indigenous communities and also as people who live in Flagstaff. Thank you. Thank you. And and would, would do you have something to add to that, or are you here um, strictly for questions? I am here at whatever capacity that is required of me. So if you have questions or comments or just want to have a conversation about it, this is the space to have it right now. Uh, excuse me, one moment. Um, so Sarah, you also have a presentation, is that correct? Um, I just wanted to note that Rose Tohi, our coordinator for Indigenous Initiatives, was not able to be here tonight because she's actually traveling for work. Um, she really wanted to make a comment on this, though, so we did record some remarks from her. Um, if you'd like, I can play that now, and then we can take questions if that yes, works. Yes, please. Great. All right. It's, a, it's about a two-minute video, so... Yad ek greetings, Mayor and Council. She tachitni no da inchnido, kelachitni bashishin, ashkad zoid ashinaldo ashin ashiche. Those are my clans. My name is Rose Tohi. I'm the coordinator for Indigenous Initiatives, City of Flagstaff. Ahiaha, thank you for this opportunity to speak. I commend our youth, our local students who have started this process through the state naming board. The Council to weigh in. It is important to emphasize that the students have been in front of the Indigenous Commission here at the City of Flagstaff, and they provided a presentation. They asked for their support in this process. 
and the Indigenous Commission has voted in support of the name change. I also wish to share the following to provide a context for Council and those listening. The sacred peaks, known as the San Francisco Peaks, are known to the Dena people as Dog Oosleed, emphasizing the majestic view and the brilliance of the snow on top. To the Dena people, the mountain is a female entity and represents the western boundary. She is a holy place for the Hopi, Navajo, Havasupai, Zuni, Apache, and other tribal nations in northern Arizona. She is associated with emergence, deities, ancestors, life-giving moisture, and ceremonies. The medicine people, our traditional practitioners, collect their much-needed items for their medicine bundles and the herbs for healing ceremonies. The Sacred Mountain are a source of healing and curing powers. As indigenous people, we continue to believe in the strength source that she gives, and our ceremonies continue to this day. This mountain, she represents love. For my beloved Flagstaff community members who understand the concept of being a good relative and embrace kinship, we can feel that sense of identity, respect for Dog Oasleed, love for the children of this land, and connection to a higher source of wisdom. Thank you for your time. Ahihat. Thank you, Mayor, for that, and I'll turn it back to you and uh, the Council on Micaias for your discussion. Thanks. Great, thank you. So we'll take uh, questions from Council members, but we'll save discussion um, for after public comment. All right, so Council Member Matthews, you had your hand up. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and the first speaker covered it, but I just wanted to express uh, when this came first um, into conversation, I had questions or concerns about honoring all the tribes that um, we have in our area, and that was explained, I think, before. So I just wanted to acknowledge that, and, and I'm very thankful and encouraged to see our youth uh, take an initiative, and I, it's got to feel really wonderful to see something that is so heartfelt um, coming to fruition. So I just wanted to make that comment and congratulate all of you. Other questions? Well, questions? Okay. Um, so I'm going to take some public comment and then we will have council discussion. So first up is Adam Shimoni. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of Council, leadership, C staff, members of the public, good to be here with you. Uh, I'm speaking today on behalf of myself, of course, and I just wanted to say a few things. You know, government bodies of all levels have systemically done harm over the generations. And, and efforts such as uh, this are examples of that harm. Those harms can be big and small, right, subtle, things that flow under the radar and other things that are more blatant in your face. Names such as the Agassiz Peak are an example of this. Although we have normalized this act of aggression through this name, it's never too late to address a wrong. I know that the city is busy with many other topics of interest, but this topic does have momentum and I support you all continuing with this momentum. I, I do find it worthwhile. Uh, I don't believe Louis Agassiz embodies the values of our city nor our community. I'm grateful to those who have been working to elevate this discussion over the years, especially the youth, and, and want to place my support in you all taking some action this evening and moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Fon Toya. Good evening, Mayor Daggett and council members of City of Flagstaff. Uh, most of you know me as Commissioner Toya, and I also belong with the Indigenous Circle of Flagstaff. But tonight, I'm representing myself. 
I'm Hopi, and sorry I might get a little emotional, but I have some comments to make. Um, I serve here uh, on many groups and work for the community every day as um, my job, and I wanted to let you all know that I did some homework, and I was able to have a discussion with a tribal leader, a village leader, and um, I want to just make some comments without kind of, you know, going too um, in depth to um, what is very sacred to us in a spiritual way and being respectful of my Hopi people. Agassi Peak is Omaki, the cloud house. If you um, Google Agassi Peak, you'll see that it um, has a quoted uh, comment on there that it is in the Katsina Peaks Wilderness on the Coconino National Forest. So with that being said, I want to respectfully ask that you consider the name change. Um, and this is uh, in support also um, to our youth. They're the ones that are going to lead us into the future. Um, they are going to be the ones to carry on our cultural um, religious ceremonies that uh, we are, are thankfully lucky enough to continue as we were not able to for the past three years. And so once uh, we've recently gotten that back, that is why I'm so emotional because it takes a lot for someone like me to represent our people and stand in front of you to explain some of this. But I do thank you for your time and I hope that you know this process is a calm process a respectful process, and um, I just want to also let you all know that this is part of um, generational trauma. Hopis and Navajos, we've all both endured a lot in our journey, and that's even against each other's, but this request today proves that we can all come together as one, as stewards of this land, so that is what I want to tell you all tonight. I appreciate your time, and um, thank you very much, Asquale. Thank you, Fawn. And if you'll stay there, please, uh, Councilmember McCarthy has a question. Well, briefly, thank you for your comments tonight. Uh, my question is, how do you pronounce the proposed name? Omaki. Thank you. Yes. And um, you know what? I, I did um, talk to the um, some of the Hopi tribal um, offices too, so uh, just know that they were um, consulted and they know of this meeting tonight, and so that the Hopi tribe is aware. Um, I let a few of the offices know, so um, just want to let you know that uh, one of them did give a blessing to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question of staff, and, and I'm not sure that you'll be able to answer this. Seems like I ask a lot of questions where I say that I'm not sure you can answer this. So if, if we support this, what is the next step? Thank you, Mayor. Um, and it's actually a bit of a complex process, so I made some notes in case this question did come up. Um, but so as some of the other speakers uh, referenced, we did, or the mayor and council did receive an email from the Arizona State Board on geographic and historic names. Um, they have received the proposal from the Flagstaff Youth. Um, and so now they have a process that they follow. And currently they are in the phase where they collect input from stakeholders throughout the community. Um, they've also reached out to the Board of Supervisors, I know, and some other stakeholders in the community. Um, so they're currently in that process. The next time they meet, after they've gathered all this feedback, they will then make their recommendation on if they support the name change or not. Um, they did note that it could take several meetings for them to reach that recommendation. Um, so, you know, we're not sure how long that process will take. 
Um, if they do vote in support of a name change, there are kind of two separate processes that take place. And it sounds like Arizona is kind of a unique state for this. So the first is the state level. If the uh, Arizona State Board on Geographic and Historic Names supports the name change, they send that to the Arizona Secretary of State as well as the Coconino County Recorder. Um, that name is then, the new name for the peak would then be used at the state level uh, for all publications such as maps, records, things like that. So they have the authority to um, change the name at the state level. They also send their recommendation to the, um, wrote down the name here, U.S. Board on Geographic Names, which is the federal body. The federal body then conducts their own process, um, and they noted these could happen concurrently as well. Um, and then that board has the power to make a name change at the federal level and um, change the name on federal documents. So kind of two processes that could occur separately, concurrently, um, but if you do support um, the student's proposal tonight, staff will draft a letter uh, noting that support, send that to the Arizona board, and then they will continue with their process. So I hope that helps um, a bit. It does, thank you. And um, Council Member House. Thank you, Mayor, and sorry. Uh, it's just a related question to that because the, so from my recollection, the email came to us as Council, but was it soliciting a, a single message at, on behalf of this, or was it asking for each to speak as an individual stakeholder? Thank you, council member, for that question. I don't believe it's specified, um, so you could you could probably take either either route, whichever you preferred. <laughs> you that guy. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor, um, and thank you for the question, council member House. It did not specify, uh, but in some discussions internally and with the mayor, uh, I believe it was decided that a collective uh, input by the council would be the most powerful. And we did not want to wait uh, until the end of the month to do that. Uh, th three of the council will be absent next week. So that is uh, one of the reasons we kind of rushed to get this on the agenda tonight. But um, with your uh, consent, we would draft that letter for the entirety of the council if that was the choosing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Councilmember Matthews. Thank you, Mayor. And I want to just acknowledge uh, uh, City Manager Clifton for escalating this um, at our last uh, Indigenous Commission. And thank you, Commissioner Toya, for being here and representing. I know that uh, Rose Tohe was really disappointed not to be here, but it was of utmost urgency for us. And so staff, Sarah, um, and I don't know if this is the appropriate time to ask this question, but I brought it up before because this has been a, a topic that we have um, discussed in, in the past. But in waiting for the state to make their ruling, whether they do or not, um, is it possible and appropriate for us to move forward in uh, the cities um, referencing the different peaks? Um, not waiting on their move, but in our marketing and um, advertising, is that something that we could possibly consider? Thank you, Council Member, for the question. Um, I would probably defer to the city manager on, on his input on that. Um, that might be at his um, decision making. Thank you. We're, and thank you for the question, Council Member. We're glad to look into that and, uh, you know, if there are no impediments to doing so, uh, we will do so, if that is the direction of the council. Thank you. Michaelis, I have a question for you. Hello. So it was stated that um, the um, Navajo Nation um, doesn't have a specific name for that specific peak, and that's how the Hopi name was chosen. How were other tribes um, um, brought into the discussion, or were they 
And um, if they weren't, it sounds like there is a process when it goes through the state, so there's still additional process for um, the public to weigh in. I just kind of like to um, to know that. And and before you answer, I just like to thank you and um, your fellow students for all the work that you've put into it, it getting to this place. So real quick before I con uh, continue on to answer that question, um, I do this for me and the peoples I come from. Uh, so real quick, I am near the water, born from edge of water. My mother's father is Red Bottom's people, and my father's father is the people's coming home. Name's Makai Smarks, and I introduce myself that way because that's how you introduce yourself in any space you come into, especially when we're coming to have this conversation at this capacity, because there is a long history here in Flagstaff, um, especially with indigenous peoples. Flagstaff wouldn't exist if indigenous peoples weren't here. A lot of us, a lot of the tribes, we laid down the foundational work so that this community could be built up on top of it. And as we're having this conversation, we're gonna be having that, that discussion with that kind of history, um, the history of genocide and assimilation. When it comes to having the conversation with all 14 tribes, um, the dialogue and the conversation varies different from the community to the governmental uh, bodies. I know we as the Net people and me personally, the, my family and the students' families have had these conversations at a community level. And we've all come to the consensus that, of course, this mountain, its name needs to change because this mountain doesn't represent who we are as a community, who we are as a people. We are here in the sacred Southwest. And of course, we, we have each an own idea of what that name should be. But it is not argued that the name needs to be changed, a name that reflects the community. And through discussion with each individual, not just a collective, not just a government official saying, oh yeah, we speak for everybody, when everyone has a different idea and a different opinion, that Omaki is the name that will begin that discussion, saying this is the House of Clouds. Everyone here in Flagstaff, especially from a Western mindset, can see that these clouds come here all the time, bring in the rain that we need, bring in the snow that is a pain of butt to, to shovel away. And the rain does make its presence known, especially here in Flagstaff after those wildfires. But right there, underneath that, underlining all of that, is us as indigenous peoples who have always lived here and will always be here. What is the name gonna be? Is it gonna be Omaki? I would love it because I am Navajo. Yeah, it's not. I have family and relatives who are Hopi and I understand the history between Navajo and Hopi. I know Navajo Nation's a huge nation and it has a big, um, it takes a lot of space, especially when it walks into any room because it's a big nation. But that's why I think it's gonna be Omaki. It's gonna be the Hopi name because the Hopis have, at least from my family, have always seen them stay true to who they are, to have that kind of discipline. And that's something that this community is gonna need as we continue to go forward, as we're looking into the past, seeing the pain we've done, but as well as acknowledging the influences the things that we brought here so that we can create that better future. Um, so yeah, that conversation is gonna be had and I'm sure all of you will be participant to those discussions because it's not just limited to indigenous peoples but all communities of color because we've all given something, the Asian Pacific Islanders, the black African American, the Spanish speaking, all of us have given piece of ourselves to this community. 
And we want that to be reflected in this mountain. So it was intentional to lay that seed of omaki, to not just have that discussion with the tribes, but with everybody, because this is our home. Thank you. And you know that there's a city council election in 2024, right? <laughs> you flatter me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, comments, questions. I, I think we're. Um, um, I think we're ready to move forward. And um, I'd like to hear from council what your your feelings are, Councilmember McCarthy. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. I I appreciate you uh, calling on me. <clears throat> I was on council when we changed the name of Agassiz Road, which went right in front of the downtown post office. And for the same reasons that I supported changing the name then, I support changing the name now. Uh, I would like to say that I am comfortable with the Hopi name, Omalki. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correct. Pretty close, huh? <laughs> oh, you got it, you got it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and I strongly support a uh, letter of support going to the appropriate parties. Um, I guess my only remaining question is, uh, I, I think I've seen the Omalki spelled a couple different ways, sometimes with hyphens and, and uh, uh, different punctuation, so uh, I'm really not sure how that done. I think, Sarah, maybe you can kind of address that before the letter goes out. But anyway, in summary, I'm very supportive. I'm very um, supportive of using the Hopi name in this case. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much. Um, my, Omaki and uh, also Mashala, uh, and to all the youth who inspired me on Indigenous Peoples Day uh, this past year um, to really think hard about this. And I think this came up originally as a two from, from me. It was all based and predicated off of the work that you guys were doing and the excitement and the inspiration that I received in my heart um, and prayerfully from your presentation and your very good discussion. Uh, I know we have a history of doing this already. I think those small steps were uh, incredibly instrumental in moving us forward and helping to build momentum around this. Uh, and I hope it's obvious that my excitement for this, this change and, and moving forward with this uh, is, 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 is obvious. Um, I do have a couple thoughts to share. I'll try to be quick. Um, you know, it's interesting. This isn't the first time that I've found myself in, involved in a name change uh, regarding a eugenicist. Uh, when I was a community organizer in inner city Sacramento, I did a lot of work with churches, and I also did a lot of work with uh, public schools and public small schools. And one of the schools that I was in and out of all the time, uh, working with teachers and parents and students, was called Charles M. Gady Middle School. And it was in a predominantly African-American community on the south side of Sacramento. Um, and the, the school administrator called me into the office one day. We, we had a nice rapport. We talked to each other a lot. She was African-American. Uh, almost everybody who worked there was. And she had just found out, and she was so upset, she went looking around to see who this guy was. The school is named after. Um, and he was a prominent uh, and, and very rich a eugenicist uh, back in the 1920s. Um, and he was, he was personally responsible for, uh, in spearheading of the, the involuntary sterilization of over 20,000 black women in the state of California. Um, and so she was absolutely just stricken with disgust. Um, and because of my background as an organizer, uh, I recognized an opportunity there. And uh, we got to talking and knocking heads and I don't think uh, it was a year that went by before the name of Charles M. Gady was, was struck from the school board rosters. And the school, um, by a process that was led by the public, was renamed to Rosa Parks Middle School. It was one of the first schools to be named that because Rosa Parks had just passed away, uh, if my memory and timeline is correct on that. Uh, so just an amazing process. And it's so weird to see... Um, the, the, the heated um, arguments on the, the side of keeping, of, of holding on to old names 
uh, for places. I think every generation and every group should have the opportunity to change a name if they want to. Um, we are on indigenous land. And we shouldn't make the mistake of thinking that this is about a self-avowed eugenicist, although it also certainly is about that. Um, you know, I, this peak could be named Liberty Bell Mountain for all I care. Uh, we should still be having this conversation. Uh, so many things have been taken away from the indigenous settlers of this region uh, in the name of colonialism and expansion um, by one particular arbitrary group. And this sort of uh, conversation is, is one that we should all jump on because it's healing and it creates a future together. It's, it's the way forward. Uh, whatever name we choose, we should at least embrace the conversation uh, and the exploration of what we name our sacred spaces. Uh, one thing I do know, and I know it in my own way, I'm not trying to um, appropriate anything here, I find those peaks to be very sacred. And I can only imagine how instrumental and important they are as one of the four cardinal uh, symbols of this land um, for the peoples who originally settled here. Uh, and so it's really important to, to keep that in mind and to honor that. Um, you know, and just a, a couple more thoughts. Um, I say this cheekily, uh, Councilmember Matthews, but I didn't even think your question was necessary. Um, I, I just assumed that we were all in here and we would do whatever we can locally as, as, as well as beyond. And, and I'm, I'm glad to hear you raise that question because um, the, it's, it's always necessary to ask the question, I'm finding, uh, being up here on the dais. So thank you for crossing those T's and dotting those I's and making sure we're moving forward. And I, I want to bring this up. I, 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 you know, I realize there's probably some sensitivities here that I'm stepping into. Um, and my intent is not to stir feelings or anything. But, uh, you know, I have an obligation here from the dais um, to speak truth to power uh, and to put on the record statements, you know, and whatever else happens here, I do think that we need to call upon Snowball to change the name of Agassiz that they use on their slopes. Now, that's a conversation couched in many um, layered issues, uh, but at least that should be a part of this as well uh, as we seek to go even further with a new understanding around how we all get along on that subject. Um, but I just thought I'd throw that into the mix. Um, I, hope, uh, I hope they're listening over there um, because this is long overdue. I think it is, uh, it's, it's, it's being driven by our youth. It's a community supported activity. Um, and really, I'm kind of, you know, I guess I'm kind of uh, naive, but I'm feeling optimistic that this will quickly move through uh, the Arizona Board on Geographic and Historic Names um, with a good result and that we can plow forward with our bigger ambitions um, through an act of Congress. Uh, because I just think that these sensitivities are changing. People are starting to understand uh, the dynamic and the history involved here. And really, this is honestly low-hanging fruit in terms of raise, ways to rectify and reconcile past mistakes and, and, and aggressions. Um, and it's always appropriate to take another look at, the, at, the, at what we call our sacred spaces. Um, because these sensitivities change and evolve over time and people change and evolve over time. And the way we understand ourselves as individuals and as members of a community and a collective also change over time. And we should be allowed to reflect that in the very words we use to, to, to call what is sacred uh, what it is. So thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Council Member House. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Micaias and uh, Vaughn and all who have been involved in this process. Um, I am wholeheartedly in support of, of moving this forward and sending out um, as strong of language of support for this as we can. Um, I asked the question about individual or council statement of support primarily because I, I want our statement to be as strong as it can be um, and uh, agree that a, a 
joint and unified statement um, has a lot of power coming from on behalf of council, um, but also want to ensure that we all remain mindful of the power of our individual voices and in, in speaking up and speaking out on these sorts of topics. Um, you know, I think it was uh, Fawn who made the statement of, of this being uh, rooted very much greatly in generational trauma. Um, and I could not have expressed that better myself. Um, I also was able to participate in the uh, Indigenous Peoples Day presentations and just remember the statement from one of the youth of the uh, fear of not having the opportunity to become an elder within the indigenous community because of these sorts of things that, that have happened and perpetuate uh, white supremacist ideologies and uh, indigenous and BIPOC erasure um, culturally. Um, and in the midst of that conversation, I remember the statement of the importance of moving from land acknowledgement to land action. Um, and that is something that sticks with me very much in this conversation. Um, and this is a moment and an opportunity, I believe, for us to move from simply land acknowledgement, which is very important, but uh, into land action through that renaming. And uh, I, I believe it was phrased in the presentation that was shared very wisely as not renaming, but reclaiming. Um, and. I think that's an important thing for us to remember as well, is that um, we are not erasing the history of, uh, of the person whose name is, is on that peak now, um, but we are uh, repairing the harm that was done in the erasure of the indigenous cultures and histories that existed in that place that were erased for the sake of that naming. Um, so this is, I think, very important uh, I want to see us move forward in whatever ways we can uh, to move this initiative forward to spark these conversations, as you said, uh, that will come from this proposal. And uh, in whatever ways that we can support this, I want to be part of that. So thank you for bringing this forward. Thank you for the work that you have put in for years uh, to make this happen and to get to this point. And I hope that we are able to move forward uh, in a way that is not a, a continuation of the legacy of um, just wait <laughs> for it. Uh, I want to see us able to take action and I, I'm reminded of the phrase that I have brought up from that side of the uh, lectern to council of if not us, who, if not now, when? And I think now is the time and we are the council that can move this forward. So thank you. Thank you, council member house. Council member Matthews. Thank you, Mayor, and just I really appreciate the comments from Vice Mayor and, and Council Member McCarthy and, and House and the ones to come. I think you're getting an idea how strongly we all support this. Um, and I just, there's a whole list of reasons why um, I feel very supportive of this, um, but one of the ones that really stick out for me personally is that, you know, so many times, well, we can't change past um, traumas and stuff, but this feels very healing, acknowledging um, the past that was, was done and acknowledging that we're trying to um, just re-recognize um, and, and to Council Member House's comments um, to reclaim um, what was taken away a long time ago as far as acknowledgement. So, um, just thank you all again for your efforts and, you know, um, ex-council member um, Adam Shimoni over there is a great coach in um, running for office. <laughs> and it's about time um, that we had some Native American representation up here, so. Thank you, council member Matthews. Uh, council member Sweet and then council member Harris. Thank you, and thank you for bringing this forward and being here tonight. Um, I am both humbled and inspired by this conversation, and by you and my colleagues. Uh, I, I love this, so thank you. 
Uh, I am very supportive of moving this forward, writing the letter as strong as we can, and I love the name Omaki. It's a beautiful name. And I look forward to having more community conversations surrounding this and the sacred peaks. Um, thank you again. Thank you, Council Member Sweet. Council Member Harris. Thank you. Um, a moment in time turned into a movement. And so that's, those are my words. Those are the words of Dr. Guthrie. Uh, used to be ethnic studies professor at NAU. So a moment in time, you've turned into a movement. And so congratulations uh, to all of you for all of your work uh, on this. Um, it has never been whether or not I supported uh, the name change, and I did from the very beginning. I just wanted to make sure that we were not promising something that we could not deliver. And so now that we know the process, we can write our letter individually, collectively, uh, and any other groups that we belong to, to send those letters of support forward. And um, for the groups that I'm a part of, I will definitely be taking this back to them and asking them to weigh in on the conversation. I was aware of the conversation when it started years ago with the Black Student Unions at NAU. Uh, when they wanted to change the name Agassi to something else in their union. And so again, I say a moment in time <laughs> changes into a movement. So with that said, staff, uh, you have, I guess, my okay if, or my vote to move forward uh, with as much speed as we possibly can to get this um, done. And whatever name is chosen, um, I will be at those conversations, but I will be silent because I think that the indigenous population need to make that choice and we need to listen to what they have to say. And so I will be at any meetings that occur, but I will not be speaking. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member Harris. Um, to wrap up, I just like to again thank the youth and I hope that um, that adults that mentor youth and our youth as they're coming up can can see their power through not only this, I mean you all have 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 done so much. But I, I hope that this is a moment where you can really feel your power and mentors can help the youth. Um, understand how powerful they are and how welcome into the conversation that they are. Uh, Vice Mayor said something that I wrote down. This creates a future together. And um, that really resonated with me. And I see this as, as a way to acknowledge and honor our kinship, as, as Rose so beautifully put it. Um, and, and our respect for each other. And this is merely one step. This is just one step in our process. And I'm honored to be a part of that step. Councilmember McCarthy. Um, unless there's some objection, 